Hello and welcome to another Yukon QSetter video. This video is about the u-substitution method for solving integrals. My objectives for this video are to show you where the u-substitution method comes from, then to work out two examples, then to give you a set of practice problems to try on your own, and finally to summarize how to use the u-substitution method using a step-by-step -step process. Imagine you were asked to find the derivative of each of these functions. Taking a look at the first one, what I realize is this is going to need both the product rule and the chain rule. And I say that because first off, we have a function multiplied by another function, which is where the product rule is going to come in. And the chain rule comes in because in order to take the derivative of this particular function, we're going to need it. Now I'm willing to bet that when you were taught the chain rule, it was explained to you like this. You take the derivative of the outside function, in this case the cube root, keep the inside function the same in this case 4x cubed plus 7, and you then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, in this case 12x squared. Notice that these next three examples are also going to need both the product rule and the chain rule, whereas these last two examples are going to need both the quotient rule and the chain rule. Now I have a question for you. What if we wanted to go the other way around and find the antiderivative of each of these functions? At first glance that sounds like a scary thought because these are all pretty complicated looking functions. But thankfully, we have the use substitution method to come to the rescue because basically what that method does is it simplifies each of the functions so that you could easily take their antiderivatives directly. Before I show you how to use the use substitution method, let me explain where it comes from. Anytime you use the chain rule to find the derivative of an expression, your end result looks like this. You have an expression where there's a function with an outside part and an inside part that is then multiplied by the derivative of the inside part. Suppose I wanted to go in the reverse direction and find the integral of this expression. What I could do is a change in variables to simplify the expression that is then going to make finding its integral a lot easier. Here's what this is going to look like. I'm going to set u equal to the inside part of my outside inside function, g of x. Notice then if I took the derivative of u with respect to x, it's equal to g prime of x. I could now multiply both sides of this equation by dx, which gives me this. And notice that du is equal to this part of the expression here. I'm now going to do my change in variables, which gives me this. The integral is equal to the integral lowercase f of u du, which is also equal to capital F of u plus a constant c. Now remember, we started off in terms of x rather than in terms of u. So I'm going to substitute back in g of x for u to get this result. Capital F of g of x plus my constant c. Now notice if I was to take the derivative of this function, I'm going to need to use the chain rule because this part here has an outside part and an inside part. This is not a coincidence because basically the u substitution method is the chain rule in reverse. Now that you've seen where the u substitution method comes from, let's work through an example. As a general result, you're allowed to use the u substitution method if you could get your given integral to look like this this being the result of taking the derivative of a function using the chain rule. The first question we have to be able to answer is, do I have somewhere in my given expression a function with an outside part and an inside part? If the answer is yes, set the inside part equal to u and go from there. As we discussed earlier, this expression does have an outside inside function here, where the cube root serves as the outside part, and the 4x cubed plus 7 serves as the inside part. Like I said, I'm going to set u equal to the inside part. And what this means is the derivative of u with respect to x is 12x squared. If I now multiply both sides of this equation by dx, I get this. And if I was to now rewrite my given integral this way, we could very easily see where the substitutions are going to happen. My outside inside function f of g of x is here, whereas my g prime of x dx is here. 
So the inside part is going to be replaced by u. This part here is going to be replaced by du, which gives me this. Taking the cube root of something is the same as raising it to the one-third power. And as you can see, we now have something that we could very easily integrate. Integrating this gives me this. However, since we started off in terms of x, we need to finish in terms of x. So I'm going to substitute back in this expression for u to get this. And this right here is our final answer. If you're ever not sure if you got the right answer, what you could do is take the derivative of your answer and see if it matches up with the expression you were taking the integral of. As you can see from my work, they do match up, which tells me it's time to move on to the next example. Now let's use the u-substitution method to solve a definite integral. Just like with the other example, the first question we need to be able to answer is, do we have somewhere in our given expression a function with an outside part and an inside part? The answer is yes, we have it right here. The e raised to x squared plus 1, where the e stands for the outside function, and where the x squared plus 1 stands for the inside function. Again, I'm going to set the inside part equal to u, then I'm going to solve for du, then I am going to rewrite my given integral to look like this, and before I do the substitutions, it looks like we have a bit of a problem. Our du is equal to 2x dx, but we don't have a 2x dx here, we just have x dx. If you ever run into this problem where you're off by a constant, simply multiply or divide both sides of the du equation by whichever constant is needed in order to get the other side of the equation to match up with what you're trying to substitute. In this case, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2. So I get du divided by 2 is equal to x dx, which matches with what we have in our expression. Now I'm going to do my substitutions, which looks like this. And notice that I did not write out the bounds of the integral here. I did this on purpose because I need to stress a very important point. Now that we've gone from being in terms of x to being in terms of u, the bounds are no longer the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the lower bound u1, and I'm going to call the upper bound u2. And I'll use these as temporary placeholders. I could clean this up a little bit by factoring out the one-half constant. And what I could do here is one of two things. One thing that we could do is keep our temporary placeholders as they are, do the integration, and then once the integration is done, revert back to being in terms of x, including returning the bounds to the values that they originally were, and then evaluating what we have to get to our answer. Another thing that you could do is solve for the values of the temporary placeholders. Since we said that u is equal to x squared plus 1, what we could do to find our new upper bound is substitute in the value of our original upper bound, and here we get 10. Likewise, we could find a value for our new lower bound by substituting in the value of the original lower bound, and in this case we end up with 5. So as you could see here, I substituted in the values of my temporary placeholders, and I can now go about the integration as I normally would, and I end up with the same answer. As you can see, both these methods require roughly the same amount of work, so it basically boils down to personal preference which one you want to use. For any definite integral, both methods are going to get you the correct answer as long as your algebra is correct. As promised, here is a set of practice problems for you to try on your own along with their answers. To summarize this video, the key conceptual idea I want you to take away from this is that the u-substitution method for integration is the chain rule in reverse. What the u-substitution method does is it does a change in variables so that it takes a complicated expression, simplifies it, so that you're able to take its integral directly. When you're using the u-substitution method, the first question you have to be able to answer is, do I have somewhere in my expression a function with an outside and an inside part? If the answer is yes, move on to step number two, setting the inside part equal to u. Step number three is to then solve for your du. Step number four is to rewrite your given integral like this so you could easily see where the substitutions are going to happen. 
Now, as you saw with the second example, sometimes what's going to happen is you're going to need to multiply or divide your du equation by a constant in order to get the substitution expressions to match up perfectly. Step number five is to evaluate the integral. If you're working with an indefinite integral, remember to add plus c at the end for the arbitrary constant. And if you're working with a definite integral, you can use either one of the methods that I showed you for example two in order to get to your final answer. Thank you for watching this video.